Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Clash Miami. My name is Bob Babbitt, brought to you by S-Fuels, Hoka, Master Spas, DeBoer Wetsuits, Premium Plus Sports, and, of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, Paralympic bronze medalist from the first ever Paralympic paratriathlon in Rio. Melissa Stockwell joins us. Best day ever? Be uh, yeah, <laughs> September 11th, 2016. Yes. Pretty amazing day. It was such yeah. a special day. We're yeah. being in the crowd for the first ever Paralympic paratriathlon was very special. And having Alyssa Seeley and Haley Dans and Melissa Stockwell sweep the podium. Yep. Right in your category. The anthem, the three flag, American flags. Three American flags. Oh man. And the fact that you were the first woman to lose a limb in battle. Correct. Uh, and to come back from that to be on the podium. That, that's like full circle. Oh, it was, that'll go down as one of the greatest moments of my life. That, just being on the podium, my two teammates, three American flags, September 11th, the national anthem. I mean, talk about, I mean, showing, I mean, really showing the world, I mean, the power of the American spirit yes. and um, ability in a disability. I mean, it was incredible. I mean, I get chills thinking about it still. Amazing. So what led to you? What, did you have, was your family military? What led to you going no. to the military? Um, my family was not military, so no real family military background. But always, as a young young girl, always very passionate about the American flag, you know, my bedspread, flags in the room, kind of everything, and then don't really know where it came from. <laughs> but then as I grew older, I saw military personnel, right. the uniform was on, flag patch on their shoulder, and it was kind of like, like I, want, I want to wear that. I want, I want to do that. Yeah. 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 And then 9-11 happens. Yep. So I was at senior year in college, um, September 11th, 2001, obviously. Right. Um, yeah, change the world, definitely. Change the course of my own life, very much. And so right away, when that happened, that was like, that was a catalyst? Yeah. So I was a senior in college. Um, I was already in ROTC. I was going to say, you were yep. part of an ROTC program. Yep, right? Yeah. Okay. But I was, being, I was graduating later that year, or in early 2002 was going to be commissioned as an army officer, but I knew on September 11th of 01 that I'd probably be deployed at some point. And was it the first deployment? Yep. Yep. Roadside bomb? Yep. And did, what do you remember? I remember it all. Um, you know, really? April 13th of 2004. This year will be 20 years, which is crazy. Yeah. I, there were four other soldiers in my vehicle. Um, thankfully, I was the only one seriously injured. Combat medic, a few vehicles back, saved my life, yes. put a tourniquet on, my leg was gone. I really had no idea. I was kind of rushed into a life-saving surgery in a Baghdad emergency room and then woke up and was told my leg was gone and kind of changed my life. So when something like that happens and you don't have a background in adaptive sport, you don't have, you know, people in wheelchairs, you sort of see them, but you don't really know much about them or see people with prosthetics. What did you know and how quickly did you get up to speed on what was out there? I didn't know anything. I don't even think I, I mean, I feel like maybe I'm sure, I mean, obviously I'd seen in my life, you know, people in a wheelchair or with a prosthetic, but I'd never you known really anybody, them, no, right. or thought much about it. So I went to Walter Reed, Army Medical Center, and there you're kind of like inundated with... I mean, I'm surrounded by other amputees. I am down, you know, obviously after kind of letting my body heal a little bit was fit with my first prosthetic leg, but you are just surrounded by it. I mean, I had other soldiers that were on two prosthetic legs, prosthetic arms, and I would look up in the physical therapy gym and I'd see a guy running on his and I was like, okay, like this is a whole new world, but it's now my world. So I got to figure it out. <laughs> and did you have, were you, you are a very positive, upbeat person. Did you have those low moments where why me? Why did this happen? And, and oh, my life is over. I, I mean, I'm human. Of course, I had those moments. Um, I think we. I mean, I was 24 years old, and literally in a second, like an entire leg is gone. Yeah. So definitely, there's definitely those days and those moments where, oh man, like, will I, what, what will my life be like? Will I walk? Will I run? Will I be an athlete? Will I have a family? Exactly. Yeah. 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 But perspective is so important. And I mean, the guy in the hospital in the hospital in the room next to me was missing both of his arms above the elbow right how can I feel sad about myself missing one leg when the guy next to me is missing both of his arms so perspective was was key so finding adaptive sport and finding because really from 2004 in 2008 you're the flag bearer at yeah. the freaking Paralympics yeah. in Beijing yeah I mean that, that happened quickly obviously it doesn't happen quickly unless you decide all right I'm, I'm not just moving on I'm putting the jetpack on and I'm moving on quick Right. So in um, so at Walter Reed, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of John Register. You oh, might yeah. know oh, yeah, yeah. a lot Very of people well. know him. 
So he came to the hospital to put, put a, this big presentation on about the Paralympic Games. Yes. I had no idea what they were. But if you know John, he has this booming voice. Oh, I was going to say, he's got the deepest voice if, in the world. I know. And if he talks about something, <laughs> you are just like over. Yeah. So he told this room of veterans, <laughs> if we trained hard enough, if we dedicated ourselves to a sport, like we could wear this Team USA uniform and compete on the world's biggest athletic stage and the country we defended over in Iraq. And I left that room like, oh my gosh, like. I'm going to do that. I want to do that. Yes. So that Paralympic dream was born pretty quickly and um, after a few months after being at the hospital, thanks to John Register. Right. And then you start swimming. Yep, started swimming kind of for rehab at the hospital and then loved it, loved the feel of the water and then decided to give it um, 2008 a try for Beijing. Right. And also you, you come out with bronze star and purple heart. Correct. Yeah, yes. That's pretty yeah. amazing. And so uh, 2008, 100 fly, 100 free. 400 free. Yep. So you got to swim three events. Got some three events. Um, not my best athletic performance. Who cares? Um, I know. Well, now that the time has gone on, that was part of the journey. It was part but of the journey. But at the time, that was my like. I was very. I mean, that was my life, right? That's what I had strived for to be on that podium, to be there. So it was. It was hard, but um, now that that was part of the journey. So triathlon doesn't get into the Paralympics till 2016. Right. This is 2008. Mm -hmm. Did you, you got into triathlon and I think you came to some of our camps. That, that Challenge Athletes, that's how I got in, Challenge Athletes Foundation. So 2008, Beijing yes. came and went. 2000, um, end of 2008, was invited to do the STTC with um, Operation Rebound. Nico Marco Longo. Yep, Nico. <laughs> Another booming um, voice guy. <laughs> had, had, yeah, exactly. Had no, tri thought triathlons were, I mean, who want, like. Who can spell it? What is it? Right, like, what is it? What do you mean? I'm swimming, biking, and running. Uh, but went out to California, San Diego. I did a hand cycle for the first time. I um, I didn't run. I think I did the shorter. What? Anyways, I crossed the finish line though, and I'm like, "What? Like this exists?" <laughs> I mean, I was hooked from from right that there. moment. So, I mean, the Challenge Athletes Foundation is. I mean, that's what got me into triathlon. And eventually, you did Ironman. I did. Yeah, 2013. 2013 was it? Yeah. Kona? No, Arizona. No, it was Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. So that Kona thing's still out there. At so point. at some point, perhaps. So when I was in the hospital though in 2004, 2005, Sarah Reinertsen, she I, that's when she was doing her Ironman. Yes. Before and I, she didn't make the cutoff time. Yeah, you but know, she five, was out she, there, and I remember seeing her, and I'm like oh my gosh, it's a female and she's missing her leg like I am and look at what she's doing. I mean, talk about, you know, that inspiration. I yes. mean, that, I mean, she was a big part of that. Yeah, and so then uh, you're doing triathlon. Yep. And then we get into the Paralympics. We do, yeah. And you're thinking, hmm, huh. why not? I'll, yeah. go, I'll go do that. That'd be fine. Let's try that. And yeah. when I look at the, the three of uh, Lisa Seeley, Haley Dance, yourself, uh, you guys have been together forever. We have. Yeah, it's, we've been... I mean, we are in Rio, Tokyo, hopefully Paris. Yes. Um, it's the been family. years. It's been years. Yeah. 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 It's and awesome. So when you go uh, and you're going to the inaugural Paris Triathlon, did you have a feel of how cool this was? That this is going to be the first ever. Of course, you're doing the deal with the minutia of, oh, I got to qualify. I got to sure. get there. Right. But now you're there. And we're there. I don't know if you, I think it's like we knew the importance of it and the excitement right. of it, but we're kind of living in our own little world. You're and it's, it's almost not until after the fact where you right. look back and I mean, not on that podium. I was so in the moment there, but, <laughs> but, but looking back and seeing overall kind of the excitement of it, the first, the, you know, the, the debut of the triathlon and the Paralympics, I mean, kind of looking back, you realize how the kind of the magnitude of all of it. Exactly. And along the way, you realize the power of the sport of triathlon. Yes. And you started Dare to Try. Yes. Yep. You started your own organization mm -hmm. specifically for the sport of triathlon we did. because you know that it's cathartic. It changes yeah. people's lives for the better. It does. And especially someone with a disability, physical disability. I mean, like you tell them they, like, hey, we're going to get you to do a I mean, you know this, like a triathlon. And they're like, no way. Like, I'm in a wheelchair. I'm missing my arm. And you're like, you can do it. I mean, the power of sport when they cross that finish line is remarkable. Magical. It changes lives. Magical. Yeah. Uh, when so you come off of 16 and now were you married by 16 so 2016 yes I was married I'd had my my son Dallas okay. who was two at the time he okay. was not in Rio so were, um, were you thinking yeah. okay wrap it up I, uh, well I was thinking I'm done I'm retiring yes, but yeah. the, the sport sucks you in <laughs> yeah so by the way that was eight years ago <laughs> I know 
so we had my daughter. We had another kid. My daughter Millie, yes. and then continued on, and yeah, here I am, and still you go here. To, go to Tokyo. Go to Tokyo. And how'd you play, Sarah? So I placed fifth. Okay. Um, I was I had a pretty serious back injury the month or two that. prior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was honestly like the happiest fifth place finisher in, in Tokyo. Yeah, because just getting there, getting there, and being yeah, being it, able it, to race it's there. It's really and, funny. We were just talking to Lucy Charles Barkley, and like she was fourth, uh, second four times. But there's different seconds, like second there are when you want to win, yeah. and second where you're coming off a stress fracture, mm -hmm. and you're just happy to be there, exactly, and second yeah. place is a huge win. Yeah, yeah. I feel like people saw me coming down the finish line, and they thought that I like had won. The I was so happy. <laughs> but I mean, I got, I was truly, I was truly happy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point, were you thinking, okay, yep, now I'm, I'm done, wrapping it I'm up. done. <laughs> yep. I think I, that year, I was like, all right, this is it. But then, it's you don't want to end, end on that. Like, I had broken my back. I don't want to end, like... I want to see what else and it's I can only do. Three years because I, exactly. Twenty twenty one. It's only three it's only years. years. I can start getting points next year. Boom, boom, boom. I had these great teammates. I have an awesome. Like I have a great setup in Colorado Springs, right. and it was all kind of coming together. So. So why not? Why not? Why not? And here and I am. So here, so Haley Dance is already in. Yep, she's in. She's got it. Yep. And uh, Lisa Seeley's not. You're not. Yep. Correct. It, and whoever wins. That's what I love about this. Friday morning, whoever wins their category. Is going to Paris. Auto qualify. It's it's a really big race for us on the Paralympic side. Yes. Because we only had two auto qualifiers. One was World Championships last year. Yes. If you won, you earned a spot. That's how Haley earned her spot. Yes. And Friday is the second one. Wow. And so if we don't win, it doesn't mean the road's over. Right. It just means that then we have to potentially wait until July to know if we're going or not. Well, and so as long as you're doing this, and the next one's in L.A. <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my husband. <laughs> You'll need a walker, I think. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I am 44, but I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. You should be proud of yeah. it. Yeah. 44 years mm -hmm. old and a Purple Heart and Silver Star and three time Paralympian mm -hmm. going for four. Mm -hmm. What could be better than that? It's a good life. I, I, I mean, my kids, they're going to be here Friday morning. My husband and Brian and my kids will be here. And honestly, that means everything doesn't it yeah and the, how, it has and a whole new perspective six and nine so they get it well my they're starting to get it yeah. it took they what well, that but I, that's just like so normal to them yes. i mean their entire lives i'm mom that has one leg that does the ath athletics right. they don't know any, any different no. their friends look at me and be like like what is yeah. she doing yeah, but to yeah. my kids it's so normal yeah, yeah. that it's just like eh, mom's racing again. Mom, eh, she's bringing eh, cupcakes eh, in next yeah. week yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah, she's like, another mom exactly which Love i prefer that. which i wouldn't want any other way yeah Thank you so much. Thank you. I know. Everything. Here I am. Breakfast with Bob. I'm on this, it. This is fun. I know. Man. Thank you we for having me. We don't get to me. chat often enough. You, yeah. you are, you're so amazing. I Thank, love thanks what for you all do. you do. Yeah. I love what you've done for to grow, adapt this part. And, and people need to watch on Friday morning. Yes, Friday to morning. See what let's see who is going to go to I Paris. know it'll be it'll be good it. it'll be a good race feeling good you're the best Melissa Ready. thank you thank you, so you. Much. all right thanks Melissa Stockwell has been our guest everybody again breakfast with Bob from Clash Miami hold on we'll be right back